Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. Our last episode was an hour and 40 minutes because we just can't help ourselves. Uh, having too much fun here, and we have problems, right? At the end of the last episode, we realized Gleba is dead. Um, and now it's really dead. The power just ran out. And, like, something went wrong in the last few minutes, and I don't know what it was. It was probably me changing something on this ship. No, th this ship shouldn't have broken anything. I'm, I'm curious what has gone wrong. Is it that we ran out of calcite? No, we didn't run out of calcite. Uh, I'm not really sure then, because that's the only thing that this base requires from an external source. Everything else runs. Crap. So what is it? What has happened exactly? Like, the core nutrient loop seems to have gotten janked up somehow. So... <laughs> it was just last episode, we were saying we don't have many blackouts. <laughs> uh, fate. Fate heard me calling and had something to say. Um, that's actually really funny. It is true, I, I tend to not have... I just haven't experienced that many blackouts in Factorio. I've had a lot of brownouts, but blackouts? That's pretty rare. Um, but yeah, this certainly... Certainly counts. Obviously, it's easier with a Gleba base because... The whole thing is like a, like a, like a watch. You know, one little, one little gear is out of place and everything goes down. Um, I am legitimately like curious what went wrong though because it's weird for something to run for five hours and then stop working all of a sudden you know what i mean like and it all happened recently too because the yumako is still unspoiled and stuff it's about to be spoiled but it's like within the last half hour everything broke yeah you can it was two hours ago everything died you can see it right there. Nutrients. Nutrients died is what went wrong. But how? How on earth did nutrients die after, <laughs> you know, tw like 20 hours of running and it stopped running? Like, that's so weird. Um, I do have some solar somewhere that's already placed, so I, I don't think... Oh, do we not? Wait, what? What happened to solar? Is it in these? Probably, yeah. Oh, thank god. Okay. Um Yeah, I'm just I'm 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 at a loss here. What could have happened? What could have happened? This will at least allow inserters to swing, I think. Slowly. Um, hmm. One megawatt. That's just going to go to charging lasers for a while, isn't it? <sighs> okay. So, can I fix it without going there myself, is kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now. It would be so much easier if I was there. I think I'm just going to go. Um, so we'll send the Synthus to Aquilo. It'll pick me up and then we'll head to Gleba. Because if, if I go, then I can just make the nutrients myself and hand put nutrients in a few different buildings and that'll spin things up again. I could probably make it work with just bots if I thought about it enough. Make a separate little network of power to power one assembler, making nutrients from spoilage. 
I'm sure we could get it working, but it doesn't. That doesn't seem worth it. I am legitimately confused on what happened, though. I'm I'm really really intrigued to know. Oh, did I run out of spoilage? I have no spoilage. That must have been what happened. I ran out of spoilage. I need a run out of spoilage alarm on Gleba. Huh. I think that's what it was. I think I ran out of spoilage and you need spoilage to make... Make what? What is it that you need spoilage to make? Wait, could that have been the problem? Or am I just am I just blowing smoke here? Um, maybe that was not the problem. What am I doing? Spoilage. Spoilage is needed to make carbon. That's it. Never mind. That's not the problem. I mean, it's it's needed to make other things too, but nothing that's going to break the base here, unless sulfur would break the base. If sulfur wasn't running, would that break anything? Um, the power is being fed by an absurd amount of jelly and and uh, Yumako, and that uh, we had zero issues with that for an insanely long time. So I don't think power and power. We actually saw power not be the power didn't go out before the production. Production went out first. I know that it wasn't power first. It was production, and then that killed power. Um, because we, at the end of the last episode, the base still had power. So how? So if we didn't have sulfur, running out of spoilage, no sulfur. What's that actually gonna do? That's gonna mean no sulfuric acid. That's gonna mean no blue chips. That shouldn't mean base stops running. Yeah, it's very possible something got corrupted somewhere. Um, it's just hard to know where that would have been. Leva certainly has the most penchant to just break in half on you. Um, wow, these bots are sad. There's some sad little bots. Alright. Let's... Uh, there we go. And then I will put my junk in some trunks. Turn off my logistics. Hop on the next flight out of here. Yeah, I'm I'm really I'm really curious, and I don't know if we'll ever know for sure. It might have been that we ran out of bioflux here. Maybe that does need to be prioritized. Oh, maybe... No, there's only two pieces of spoilage. That's not enough to keep the inserter from reaching, is it? But maybe this is the spot that needs a spoilage get a ridder of her. Maybe this is what broke the camel's back. Um... We don't have uncommons here. I guess that could have been it. Mm, not totally sure, but maybe. I'm not exactly sure how a bioflux in that spot would have spoiled, though, because we're constantly using nutrients. So. I think that was just the thing that happens where the two on the end end up not getting grabbed. 
and then they spoil, but the new ones keep getting grabbed. So I, I don't think that was it. Can't tell you for sure, I guess, that it wasn't. But I don't think that was it. But let's travel up there ourselves real quick. Power, by the way. I think power is okay since we added more. I am going to want to try fusion power. For sure. Whee! Oh, it's such a cool, such a cool animation. Okay, so we're here. Let's go to the Glabes. see what happens. If you didn't have to restart Glaba at least three times, did you even Glaba? I think this is our first time with, with a full break since we left. We had a couple issues while we were there, uh, but that's just, you know, pretty much everybody's experience, I assume. But the full on, like, it breaks after you've left hasn't happened until now. Which is what's so funny about it, like that's... It's not like it was a few hours after we left. You know, we're talking... I don't know where exactly we left the planet in this process, but... It uh, was at least 20 hours ago, by the looks of this. Can you search rocket part? You can, okay, so that's probably about when we left was when we started making rocket parts. So yeah, somewhere around 20 to 25 hours ago. Um, and it ran that long just fine. Crazy. All right, we're halfway here. What went wrong? The sad part is I don't know what went wrong and therefore I can't fix it. We needed a video recorder, you know? It's like, I need to know. I need to know what happened. So I know what to fix. Like, obviously this is spoilage now. Maybe it was this one? But again, it should be consuming Jelly Nut at such a constant rate. And that's grabbing spoiled first. Is it possible we had the same issue here we had with Biter Eggs? Like, I don't think so. So I probably need a spoilage getter rid of her on on this belt end. I doubt that was the problem. Um We have a spoilage getter rid of her on that belt end, so that's keeping jelly flowing. Jelly nut flowing. Um Couldn't tell you. But let's head down and figure it out. There was a piece of wood on that belt, but it's okay. Because it's just a spoiler to get a ridder of her on the end anyway. There was only one piece of wood, so it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, you did see that right. Alright, alright. What are we doing here? So let's grab... Oh, I guess I don't have anything. We'll grab some spoilage to make some nutrients. I definitely think the fact that there's zero spoilage in the logistics network, like, I'm not seeing where that could have caused the problem, but it does seem problematic to me that we ran out of spoilage. Uh, so I definitely want to fix that. Even if it's not what broke the base, I do want to fix that. Um... I'm still not really sure what broke, though. Because spoilage is only an ingredient in things where it shouldn't have been a problem, and I'm only using spoilage to kickstart. Well, 
Maybe it was this. Maybe this stopped running. Which means the jelly stopped running. May maybe. Because this is a kickstart. It uses bioflux. But the bioflux needs nutrients. And it uses spoilage to, to kickstart those nutrients. Spoilage that it itself would theoretically produce over time, but is not requesting. Maybe that's, maybe I need to request spoilage here. Any spoilage that gets produced by this nonsense goes back in here, but it doesn't actually request any. So maybe that's part of the problem. Um, I could see that having some knock-on effects because less jelly means less power. Maybe power slowed down. Eh, it still doesn't really explain it fully for me, but... How do I even get things started again, I guess, is the first question. Um, uh, do I have some solid fuel? I do, I have some solid fuel. No rocket fuel, though. That's also telling. Totally ran out of rocket fuel. Where's the solid fuel? Over there. Dump that in here. Get some heat spreading again. Oof. Hey, thanks for the follow, Jacob. Welcome, welcome. I'll get power running again for a minute. Um... There's some jelly nut, okay. Yeah, we really need jelly nut here. Because jelly is what makes the most power. So if we can get some jelly going. Well, what's the jelly power? 10 megajoules a piece? That's not bad. No! Uh, oh, that's funny. We have power here that's not actually powering anything. If only you could do wireless heat, then everything would be fine. Wait, what am I doing? One jelly does not... No, no, no. This is not making power. That's costing power. Jelly nuts better power just burning it. Oh my gosh. Spoilage is worth nothing. All right, um, so there's a little bit of power. We'll spin back up eventually here. Get some more jelly nut. Oh, I have a lot of, I can just shove the jelly nut into the power. That'll work. I don't know why that didn't occur to me. I already knew there was some unspoiled jelly nut. I must have forgotten. Time to rebuild Glaba into a mega base that's broken anyway. But I don't know how it broke. That's the worst part. Oh, it's so unsatisfying. Honestly, I actually think that's a bit of a problem. Um, I mean, and I know I know enough about how Factorio is designed to know that, like, I think the devs would probably agree. It's not good if your base can break and you don't know why it broke. It's, it's a frustrating experience as a player because you're like, I could fix the problem if I knew what the problem was, but I have no tools to be able to go back in time. I say no tools. There are some iffy tools, but there's not any real legitimate tools I can use to know what went wrong here. Um, and, and it really requires me to kind of go back in time because of the spoilage mechanic, 
it really makes like the time element more. And I know that's sort of true with factories, like factories can break and you don't know exactly what went wrong, but the spoilage mechanic kind of doubles down on making it harder to figure out later. Um, Cause it's not like something where, cause like literally your ability to figure out what went wrong is going to change as more and more items spoil. <laughs> so, so it's, uh, it is, it is a bit of a gameplay problem that you can't actually go and figure it out. Because, like, some building broke, you know, and I, and to be fair, there is some challenge there. There's a gameplay challenge of, like, wanting to set up a base that's going to set off alarms. If anything starts going wrong, that way you'll hear an alarm, or you just see the icon pop up, you know, before things really go wrong. So, like... I totally am, I'm not saying the, like, the game needs to, you know, fix that for you. I do think it's a bit of a problem that it's this difficult to figure out what went wrong, uh, is all I'm trying to say. But it is true that, like, there are some tools you can use with proper planning to prevent things from going wrong in the first place. And I think that is certainly the goal of a good Factorio player, is to make sure things never go wrong. Um, but... Uh, I've read enough Reddit comments and Reddit threads to know that a lot of people are experiencing things going wrong on Blaba, more so than the other planets. <laughs> and it is kind of hard if, if the tools aren't there to, like, figure out what went wrong. So, yeah, I'm kind of just perplexed. Um, I do need to feed some manual nutrient here. This guy needs some Yamakos. so that we can make a couple biofluxes. That's right here. There we go. And then a couple biofluxes. Should go over here. There we go. And then we make... Oh, I need a couple more. Shoot. Ah! Why are, why are nutrients appearing in my inventory? Oh, the handcrafting is just that slow. Okay. <laughs> it's literally the thing I told my my character to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It took you a long time to get your Glaba base foolproof. And I and I feel like part of that is is due to this difficulty of like not being able to know what went wrong. Okay, and they're stealing. This is part of the problem, to be honest. Um I'm gonna put it so that at most half of the bioflux can go into a provider chest. Again, it's like, I'm trying to think about how that could have broken, broken the base. I don't think that was it, but it certainly could have been a part of it. I don't know. Um, okay, hold on. We gotta keep powering things here. Okay, so power keeps going. Um,. And then I need spoilage to make more. Ah, uh, let's see, bio chamber. You make the jelly. I need a nutrient to kickstart that. Where's a tree? Hold on. The jelly's the fastest spoiling thing I've got, so I just want to... That'll spoil in just a couple minutes here. <sighs> um... <laughs> So then, where did that bioflux go? I wonder. What all requires bioflux to build? Uh, it might have been the sulfur. I 
wish I knew where the bots took it. Yeah, those are belted bioflux. Oh, there's some bioplastic. Because I just need enough to run this once. But then I need the nutrients for that. <laughs> ah! More spoilage! Yeah, I, I do... I don't know. It doesn't feel like spoilage running out would break it if sulfur's all it provides, but it might have been that jelly processing related stuff where like... We needed some spoilage to kickstart something. I don't know what it was. But I definitely want to add spoilage production to the base after this. Alright, there we go. There's a few more nutrients. Which need to go into... Our Yumako... Doodad. And the jelly not do dad. And then I made some bioflux. No, I didn't. We just got spoilage. More spoilage. Oops, all spoilage. Um, what am I doing here? Why don't I manually... I think the problem is it's... We need to kickstart things with a proper amount of nutrients. <laughs> Alright, so... I will make the bioflux myself. Which is where? There it is. Alright, and now I need some mash. But for that, we need spoilage. Ha! Do I have spoilage now in the network? I have uncommon spoilage. Um, that's funny. I think, I think Gleba's been great. Don't get me wrong. I do wish, I do really wish there was a way um, other than just like looking at production graphs and hoping that I can glean some useful information from it. Yeah, I wish there was a way for me to be able to like figure out what happened. Like, if I could watch, like, literally, if we had a video camera recording of my base, like, that would be great. And I could go back and, and look around at different times and scrub the footage and figure out what happened. Like, that would be really fun. Um, but, obviously, that would be a nightmare to figure out from a, implementing that into the game perspective. But that's what I wish I could do right now. Uh, anyway, okay, so what are we doing? We need, we've got jelly if I run this for a minute. And then we've got Yumako here. If I just grab some little fruits and throw them in here. Okay, so there's the mash. And then that can make the bioflux. There we go. Nutrients spoil so fast, it, you gotta really get, get on it with this. Alright, there's the, some bioflux. I need more nutrients now for that, and then I need nutrients for this. Put the bioflux in there. There we go, now there's some more nutrients. But then I need to run those quickly to all the things that need them. Which is primarily these. And the jelly nut one. And I think that will spin things up, because then we've got and we've got bioflux being made, and then the bioflux. Hopefully that's enough. Come over here and get this guy rolling. And then we've got nutrients on the belt. 
And then that starts the whole thing fresh. All right. I hope that was good enough to spin it up. Whew. Wowzer. That was a thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible, technically, that nutrients spoiled and I wasn't able to make more, but that doesn't really make sense because it ran for 20-something hours. And I don't think a design that is flawed at the core runs for 20 hours and then stops. So it either means something that there's like a technical flaw that's a really low chance of all the right things occurring, something like that happened, or it's just that I ran out of spoilage and that was a really slow process. I really don't think I would have a power issue because I have, um, I have rocket fuel backup for power. So like, power is not gonna go low very easily. I mean, it's possible if I was using the rocket fuel backup and I was out of rocket fuel. It's, yeah, there's a lot of things that are possible, but see, I even have this. These are supposed to be putting all that stuff to spoilage. So maybe that was all going to make spoilage and rocket fuel power wasn't enough. Is that what happened? Yeah, I definitely need to to change some things to stack inserters. Most of this design was before I had stack inserters. Why did I change one of each of these? That's really funny. Um, the nutrients on the main nutrient belt are stack inserters, by the way. It's hard to see because when a fil when a inserter is filtered, it, it's mostly covered. But that's running now. Um, yeah, I'm wondering what the primary issue is here. It could be, it could be that it was a power issue. It certainly could. How would we go about making sure that doesn't happen? We could use a separate system. Hmm, hold on. We could use a separate system to provide spoilage. Um, and then that way we never have this issue where we're requiring Spoilage is meaning less power. That could be it. That could be the way to do it. Um, jelly nut processing can be done in an assembling machine. So I could, if I wanted to, although is mash better? No, you only get two mash per. So if I want, this could be a way, oops don't have epics on me. Should have these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this could be a way to make spoilage if... Maybe if we have enough over here. Oh, yeah, the seed problem. That's why I was doing it the other way. Thank you. I knew there was a reason. Um, yeah, because we're collecting the seeds. Wait, there's a deficit on seeds that way. What? No. Oh, you're right. You're right. No, no, no. Wait, hold on. Eh, no, it's not a deficit on seeds. It's a one-to-one -one on seeds. One jelly nut. You get 50 jelly nut per seed. And that gets you exactly one seed back. Um, so that's not true. It's just neutral. So I'm fine with the new with the break even. 
So like we could add a spoilage producer here that like measures if I'm low on jelly nut for some reason, I don't want to run this. So we'll put a requirement on these that says, yeah, stack inserters inserting can have issues. Um, stack inserters outserting are usually fine. As long as you're, you know, thinking about the same things. Like it, if it can outsert spoilage, you could have issues, but. What am I doing? Jelly nut, the item. Greater than 400. So if I have, if I have at least. Am I going crazy? Oh, it's measuring stuff on belts too. I see. Okay. And then this is the jelly nut processing. I don't know if you can prod module this. You can. Okay. And then... And then what? And then... We have... How do I want to do this? Storage containers? I don't need the bots to come pick it up. I don't think they do. You just put it in. Just let it spoil in the container. Um, and then we'll just have those be restricted based on if we have spoilage or not. We have less than 5,000 spoilage. Maybe even 10,000. We'll run that. Um, uh, they'll eventually fill with seeds, I guess. So we need seed removers. So that needs to keep going. Let's, uh, we should have now some overgrowth jelly nut soil that we can't use. Do I need landfill first? Oh, that's barely purple. Okay, over here there will be some opportunities. There we go. Um, boom, 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 boom. More jelly nut planting sites. Ban the bot. And we are off to the races. Okay, how are we doing on, on a stone patch? 52,000. Someday I'm going to have to branch out. Pollution cloud is tiny. Ah, there's an enemy base or two within actual range. I know it wasn't an attack, though, because we would have gotten a notification about destroyed stuff. But we know that wasn't an issue. Yeah, Trenton, I think I definitely have trended towards using conditions where I maybe didn't need to. Glaba, though, there's a lot of reasons to use circuits and conditions and and uh, stuff like and just logic, I guess is the word for it. There's a lot of situations where logic is a great thing. So I have used quite a bit of it. Okay, let me grab a little more overgrowth soil and see if we can have a few more jelly nut plants. It's also I would no, no. I don't actually believe that. I was about to say it's also possible that we just didn't have enough jelly nut, but it wouldn't work. It shouldn't work for 20 hours and then break. If 
if something that only had a five minute turnaround time wasn't enough. Like, it would have broken sooner than that. Unless I built up some massive stockpile of something, which I think was spoilage, and that was slowly getting drained over those 20 hours. That's my best guess, is, it, is, is that was the problem. Okay, but things are running now. This is... I'm going to go with halvesies on this. Um, up to half of my waste product will turn to spoilage. If we have less than 19,000. But half will always go to power at least. And yeah, I mean, these are already filled up, so it's hard to imagine these were that drained, right? Maybe I should have this as a bigger request. Like, why not request a thousand? There's no good reason I, I shouldn't have a better buffer for power here, but I, I can't imagine that was the issue. Because it took like two seconds to get that 500 rocket fuel that we wanted over there. So I really don't know what broke. I really, I can't, I can't figure it out. Maybe we'll never know. I'll just have to le let the base let the base be what it is. I mean, we do have another way now to pr produce um whatchamacallit spoilage. So that's good. And once the jelly nut picks back up, it's gonna take a minute. You know, we have to farm a few batches before we catch back up, I think. What's going on here? Oh, it's the other tower that's controlling this. I see. I, I, know, I know power loss is, is the current uh, chat favorite thing. I really don't think we lost power here. Uh, I guess we can even look at the graph of that. No, we didn't lose power. We did not lose power. We didn't lose power until half an hour ago. When we showed, or 0.8 hours ago. And that was when, if you look at the production, that's long after production stopped. So we certainly, we certainly had production issues, not power issues. Power issues occurred just because production issues, you know, all my nutrients were gone for an hour and so the heat ran out. That's what happened. And we used up all the all the rocket fuel stockpile. So by having a bigger rocket fuel stockpile, it's going to mean there's even a longer gap between a production break and a power break, which is good because then we have longer to catch it. <laughs> I probably should have, now that I'm thinking about it, some sort of basic, like, if nutrients on this belt goes below a certain amount, I should set off an alarm, that sort of thing. Do I have alarms here already? Or sorry, speakers, they're not called alarms. Um, I feel like we have some in one of these boxes. There's one. All right, um, so I'm gonna hook this up. Because really, this is the core of everything. If this starts going south, we're gonna have problems. So if nutrients on this belt become less than probably 300, that means we've got problems. So global alarm, it doesn't need to be that loud, but I do want it to show up. Show alert nutrients. So yeah, this sort of setup is the thing I could have done low on blah, blah. you know to help prevent issues it's possible that spoilage was unhandled but if spoilage was unhandled then the base wouldn't have spun back up properly it's not like I went around and took spoilage out of a bunch of outputs here and spoilage doesn't spoil into nothingness spoilage stays so if you have a spoilage blockage that's not going to be undone by just putting nutrients in buildings, which is all I've done. So if spoilage blockage had been the issue, 
we would have had to have removed the blockage manually, and I haven't. So that implies that that was not the issue. There was two spots I added a spoilage getter rid of her. It is possible, like it is possible that this one was blocked up with spoilage. Um, the reason I don't think that's probable though is this is constantly running. And this is only grabbing jelly nuts when we don't have very many, and this is always grabbing spoiled first. So like, it, it ran for 20 hours like that, and there's no real changes that this experienced. These are unrelated to, to consumption. Like, this is going to produce constantly no matter what. So, so that, re this real, like, I doubt this will ever run. Um, except for maybe that one on the end, right? We know that one spoils because the inserter doesn't grab it. But, uh... Yeah, and Crazy Mage, again, like, I, like, you're being helpful in, in the types of things you're thinking about. I don't think that's it, though, I because our nutrient production, again, it's not going to run for 20 hours and then all of a sudden not be enough nutrients. We're not talking 20 minutes here. We're talking 20 hours of this working. Um, so we've been making enough nutrients. It just something weird happened. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jan or Yawn, not sure which it is, that doesn't work. I've, I've tried that. Rotating, if you have an inserter grabbing, and like, you know, it's not grabbing the item on the end of the belt, rotating it like that, it still won't grab the item at the bottom right here. It's really annoying. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. I had a friend, I had a friend named Yawn in, uh, college, so... I guess that's why it popped into my head as what your name might actually be. He was the guy who lived across the hall. We played Minecraft together. Good good times, good times. Back back when I like played vanilla Minecraft. You could tediously use selector combinators to always pick the lowest one. In terms of things on a belt that are spoiled, no. This uh, only applies to belts. All right, <laughs> only applies to belts. This never applies to belts. This only applies to inventories like chests. Um, yeah, I don't know what went wrong. Everything seems to be running fine now. Heck, this even started itself back up properly, and we've had all kinds of issues with the ore, the ore generation. But the ore generation seems to be fine now, too. And I didn't have to do anything. Which actually feels really good. Wait, how did this spin back up? Did I? Where's the thing that makes copper bacteria? I have the iron one right here. Did I make a copper one somewhere? I must have. Otherwise, this wouldn't have been possible that it spun back up. But where is it? I guess this is what the search function is for. Um, ah, it's right here. Oh, there they are, okay. Yeah. You were slowly pulling Logibots out of a RoboPort. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, something really weird happened and it wasn't Calcite running out. That was, that was my first guess, but we've got Calcite. I just can't even. Even, oh, now the eggs are broken. I need to go fetch a pentapod egg. Because once Glaba breaks, the Glaba egg loop breaks. Um, do we still have lasers? Are you kidding me? I took out every laser? Why did I do that? That's stupid of me. Um, I can't melee these to death? Oh. Well, I was hoping... I guess you guys can follow me back to base. How's that? Come with me. I have some rockets that have your name on it. I guess this will be good to see how quick rockets can kill a medium stomper. Come on, dudes. Come on. 
Quit your strafing around and chase me. Jeez. That firing delay, though. Oh my gosh. I wasn't expecting that. Wow. Um, that was kind of huge. I, like, I don't want to be a complainer, but I have a complaint about that. <laughs> it just, it feels like literally the very tool that's meant to be used to kill stompers should at least have a fast enough target acquisition that it can shoot at an enemy that's walking towards it before it gets to you. Right? Because, like, I mean, I guess it might have, it, was it that, like, it was rotated wrong and now it's rotated right and now it'll work better? Because it's like the issue there wasn't, wasn't that I didn't have enough firepower, it was that it took an extremely long time before the first rockets even got shot. Um, a little bit more firepower might not hurt either, just to be doubly certain, but... I, I do I do think that's a bit of a concern. I'm hoping that it was a rotation related issue and now that they're facing downwards they will start shooting faster. But otherwise that's kind of like well what are you supposed to do? It's literally the very tool meant to kill stompers. Uh so I hope that works. Uh Firepower is plenty. Once the rocket started hitting it, it died like immediately. It only took, you know, five or six rockets or whatever. Um, I'm I'm hoping it it was th that was the issue. Cause yeah, that that was kind of scary. That even though the range is that high, you know, the stomper was here before the rocket started hitting it. Maybe the stompers are a little too fast. That could be part of the problem too. I don't I don't actually know their speed. There's such a weird a weird way that they walk. Uh, they might actually be walking a lot faster than it looks like they're walking. Um, Alright, so pentapod egg. And my egg looper is right here. Uh, yes, Dave. Exactly. Good point. Same thought. <laughs> Let's actually not let... Also, didn't it say five was the expected return? Maybe it's a, a chance to get a certain amount. Yeah, that would have been really funny if it hatched. I kind of do want to lure another one over and see what happens now. See if we can find one. Uh, this base has nothing interesting. How about you down here? There we go, there's one. Will it keep chasing me, or do I need to stay, like, within distance? It seems pretty... pretty intent on following me. Ish. With some random walk thrown in there. Uh, this is pretty disappointing. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's working, and the bots are fixing all the broken pieces. Um, but, but like, the acquisition time is so slow with compared to how fast the stompers are walking. I don't know. I think we have enough that, like, nothing's going to destroy our base, but it certainly makes me a bit more concerned about the overall... Like, I think we need way more. And because you can't use walls, right? So it's like, with biters, the way you get around, like, oh, the enemies are kind of fast enough that they get to you a little bit before they're killed, is like, well, now they have to chew on a wall for half a second, and that's what takes them out, is that half second of chewing on a wall. 
but but with the rocket turrets they're so slow that like by the time the rockets from the rocket turrets are hitting the thing they're already killing the rocket turrets and there's nothing you can do about it because now obviously there are a couple things i could do about it thing number one is i could just have way more lasers because even though they only deal 20 percent damage they still deal a lot of damage uh, the other thing I could do is use, uh, yes, exactly, Salmelu. I could use the, the lightning towers. And then, yes, that was the next thing I was going to say, Aelor. That was actually the first thing I thought of, was just having higher quality rocket turrets. And then more range fixes the problem. So it, it certainly is a fixable issue with the technology that they provide you in the game. It is. It does feel like I had enough turrets and they're only medium stompers there's still a whole nother tier of stompers above this you know that they should have been able to take out one medium stomper um but yeah i don't know this is fine between more turrets and whatnot we should be fine Yeah, yeah, I, I think there was an expectation I had that, like, oh, you know, four or five rocket turrets could handle one medium stomper without anything dying, I guess, was my hope. And yeah, they, they were getting towards the dead zone, but um, I think that I think the main issue is just the rotation rate of rocket turrets is so slow that that seemed to be the problem that we were kind of running into. All right, now again, I forgot to make sure all those inserters were in power range. You know, funnily enough, this would be a good use case for burner inserters. And that might be a sentence that's never come out of my mouth before. <laughs> but requesting ammo for a turret that's inside of logistics range, but not power range, because you, cause you could request fuel as well as ammo and then use a burner inserter. Okay, I think that's it. All right, is Gleba still running? Gleba seems to be running fine. And I think we're protected well enough, though what we just experienced is a little bit scary. I think it's enough protection that we'll be fine. Um, we will get attacked, you know, looking at where the cloud is and where expansions have started getting to, we'll start getting attacked on this eastern, southeastern front for sure um, in the next hours. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if, like, the combination of more rocket turrets and the fact that they're all pointing the correct way will be good enough, or if I really will need to bring in lightning turrets or... Um, start making higher quality rocket turrets. We'll see if those are necessary. Oh, oh, the platform just got here. And now it's asking for bioflux. That was weird. Which will, all of this was because we got cryoscience to Nalvis and we're like, wait a second, <laughs> what's going on with the biters over here? And I think it was because the bioflux was spoiled. It was really close to being spoiled bioflux and that started causing some issues. And we ran out of bioflux, which obviously has caused problems. So we need to go capture those when we... Can you do that automatically? I think, yeah, you can make a rocket tur and turret and put uh, capture doodads in it, right? I think so. But I'm not grabbing rocket turrets from Glaiva, so we should probably do that. <laughs> of course, those default from grabbing from Nalvis. <laughs> Um, Aquilo plus burner inserter. Yeah, I I did see that they don't need to be defrosted to work, which is interesting. Okay. 
Okay, are we making the science yet? What's going on? Did I screw something up? Uh... Oh, wait. Is this just a separate egg loop? Oh, I'm, I think I'm being a dummy. I need to start that egg loop, too. Those are two separate loops. Notice okay, never mind. That inserter has missed a couple items on the edge, but then it's gotten a couple others. I guess if there's two in a row, it gets the second one. But I probably should have that there instead. All right, well, an hour into this episode, and I think we uh, have fixed our Glabo base, and we've got. Finally, we've got our agricultural science packs rolling again. So that should allow for some some of the new researches to begin in earnest. Whew, finally. So I will hop uh, back on a rocket here. I do feel like something is still going to go wrong, but, but I'm going to go to the Synthus. And we're going to ride that back to Nelvis. Yeah, it'll last another 20 hours and then we'll see what happens. Like, I've already got 20,000 spoilage ready to go. Let's see if it stays there. But yeah, for those of you watching from the future YouTube episodes, I do think we'll call it an episode here. Um, and yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and we'll see you in the next episode.